What's up everyone, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today we're gonna to be checking out the brand new Otor Laser Master 3. Now I've been waiting for this thing to come out for a while. This is a new 10 watt module and look how small this is compared to the X-Tool or the longer like we checked out a couple weeks ago. And it is a lot lighter. So I can't wait to see what this thing is capable of. But the first thing we gotta do is get it put together. All right, we're just gonna go through unboxing and assembly quickly because I really wanna focus on exactly what this machine can do. They really outdid themselves with this one. They stepped away from the off-the-shelf T-slot style frame and went with a completely custom one that I think looks awesome. Inside this packaging list, you'll find a QR code. You should be able to take a picture of this and go to their website. If not, I'll put a link in the description. When you get there, if you just scroll down to documentation and then select your country, you'll find the complete assembly instructions. They also have a really good video on this process that I recommend you check out. This is a big step up from the Laser Master 2. Those assembly instructions were a little rough and was definitely something people complained about. It looks like they heard our complaints and corrected those issues. Assembly is pretty straightforward. The frame only fits together one way and the pieces lock in solid, so you shouldn't have any issues getting it perfectly square. Belts are also a major improvement in my opinion. They're much easier to install and adjust. Finally, the wiring. There's really no need for a cable chain. Everything stays outside of the cutting area. Also, the plug that connects to the laser itself is a much nicer design. To get it running, you just hook up your power and a USB cable. You'll notice this little foot on the laser unit itself. This is for focusing. Just lower the laser down until the foot touches your material and tighten the set screw. It's nice not having to worry about losing a setup block like the previous models. For software, I'm using Lightburn, which is a paid program. It's 60 bucks for a license at the time of this recording. It works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. You can also use Laser Gerbil, which is free, but not available for Mac. There's also an app, which I'll talk more about a little later. One thing you're going to want to do if you get one of these machines is just practice. I see a lot of people who think they're going to just jump in and create amazing stuff. While these machines are definitely capable of it, it takes practice to learn the effects of changing different settings. There's little test cards that people have made that will make a series of squares at different settings, but I like to use bigger images so I can get a better idea of what stuff really looks like. The most basic thing you need to know is that you can make your image lighter by speeding up the movement of the laser or turning down the power. To make something darker, slow down the speed or increase the power. You can see here the effects of different speeds. Another adjustment is the line interval. This is the space the laser moves between passes. The lower this number, the more passes it will make, and the image will be darker. It will also have more detail. Otor claims that the stepper motors act as limit switches on this new machine. Basically, it will sense a voltage spike when the axis stops. This helps reduce wiring and mechanical switches that could possibly fail. If the machine stopped because of something like someone hitting this big red button, it should return right to where the origin was last set to after rehoming. You just reset the machine with this little reset button and it will automatically rehome on startup.
Next, I just told the machine to go to the origin. I hit start, and what do you know? It's in the same exact spot. I ran this last pass a little slower, so the line is a little darker. Now let's see how it performs while cutting. I made one pass at 10 inch per minute and 100% power. It cut through most of it, but the part didn't easily pop out. Next, I slowed it down to 5 inch per minute. This time, it cut through with no problem. For final test, I sped it back up to 10 inches per minute, but made two passes. Again, the piece came out with no problem, and the edges were a little cleaner. Leather patches are a great thing to make with your laser. The logo engraved nice and dark, and you can even cut them out. I prefer to keep the speed up and make multiple passes when cutting leather. Just like wood, this will result in less charring on the edges. Not only can it engrave wood, but you can also use it to remove paint. Here's a few examples of the effects of different speeds. You can even combine multiple colors so when it burns one layer away, you're left with the color below. It's a good idea to either lay on a really thick first layer or to come back and seal it. When I sprayed the black over this blue, the black was still able to soak into the wood grain. You'll get a cleaner image if this doesn't happen. Slate coasters are one of my favorite things to engrave. The designs come out really crisp and you can do them pretty fast. Now I know a really common question is going to be, well, how does this compare to the X-Tool? I plan on doing a full comparison video, but here's a sneak peek. While they are in a similar market, I don't know if they're really going after the same audience. The Atura is much lighter and therefore faster. Both of these machines are running at 500 inches per minute. At least that's what Lightburn is telling them to do. The X-Tool is having a hard time keeping up. I assume it's because of the acceleration rates and the weight of the laser on the X-Tool. Because of this added weight, the X-Tool was having a really hard time with stability. While I was doing this comparison, I did notice that the Atour was engraving everything a little lighter. I removed the nozzle for the air assist. There's probably no reason to have it on if you aren't actually using the air assist, which for most of these tests, I wasn't. The lens looked a little dirty, so I carefully cleaned it with a Q-tip. This made a huge difference. Check out how dark it is now, and please keep in mind that the top one was pushed to 800 inches per minute. That's really impressive for a little diode laser. Another really popular thing to engrave is the stainless cups. The laser Master 3 does a great job of it. Again, these are something that takes practice. The settings could be adjusted a little bit and it looks like I didn't have everything perfectly square. I'm still really happy with it though. It's a great first attempt. If you guys are interested in learning more about this machine, I'll put a link here and in the description. This is an affiliate link, but you still get the same great price. It just helps me out a lot because they give me a small kickback from each purchase. They've made it much easier to use the rotary attachment on this model. 
You simply plug it into this port and flip this switch. Then you just have to select the rotary option in your program. All right, one final thing, the app. I really gotta say, I am super impressed with this. A lot of companies claim to have an app for their machines, but I haven't found many that actually work. The fact that Otor was able to get this to work as well as they did is amazing. And I'm sure it will only continue to get better. You can upload an image directly from your photo album and engrave it just like you would if you were using a computer. You can even close the app and use others while it's running. Now is probably a good time to plug my other social medias. And if you're into podcasts, make sure you check out the makeshift podcast that I do with my friend Corey. We discuss laser engravers, CNC routers, woodworking, and all sorts of things related to manufacturing and making. We even share some of our stories from our time in the Navy. I'll put a link in the description to all of that stuff. If you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'd also love to know what you think about this machine. It would really help me out if you would like this video and share it with your friends. And please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. Until next time, here's a few more videos that YouTube thinks you might like.